Hey YouTube, this is Josie P with Trans Gamer, and I'm here to actually do the new episode of Dead Game Society. And today I'm actually talking about one that was a huge favor of mine, and I'm terribly sad to see die. That is BattleTech the card game. Now, if you're not familiar with BattleTech or you're not familiar with anything MechWarrior related, I'm sorry, it's awesome, check it out. But, you know, for those of you who are familiar, I'm going to presume you know this older franchise. And as I cover what the game included. Now, Wizards of the Coast put this out way back in the day. I mean, I'm looking at the cards, you're looking at 96. Yeah, I think the newest card I have in my samples is 97. Um, and it did go under. Sadly, it has a lot of similarities to Magic the Gathering and Zone Rights, and a lot of differences that make it worthwhile. But um, how it works, you have a deck, that deck is your life. Every time you get hit, you take damage, your deck goes down. You set up resources, here I'll show you a resource. You have, you know, there's different types of resources you can set up. As you can see, we'll just show one example. It has a zero cost. Like they actually tell you, and then you know its abilities. Where logistics, for instance, is if you have one, you may restock a card from your hand at the end of the turn. Tactics, you may add tax, or if you have tax in play, add plus one to your initiative. And assembly during your re or repair reload phase, you may pay R to once to repair one point of damage on one mech if you have an assembly in play. So the fact that the mana the actual lands did something special without being special. This is the basics the basic ones was good. Now you also had mech pilots, which these were optional, but they increased your mech at a cost of you know your well your resource lines. So you see right here if I can hold still. This one costs a two and two tactical. Whereas the the Kelhelm pilot costs zero and three tactical, and what happens is when you put them in play, you attach them to a mech, and they add stuff like an ability. Or with this one, you can see it gives plus one initiative, plus one attack. Now, mind you, for you veterans out there, if I do miss a rule, I am terribly sorry. It's been a long time since I've actually been able to play, and I'm doing this all off the top of my head, so. You know, be nice in the comments if you want to correct me, but if you correct me, that's fine. And plus, I am thinking about getting back in the game by buying out whole collections. So, there's also stuff called command cards, which are cards that you can play that have special, or they're different. Um, this, for instance, is a command artillery. It sits up on the field, and it's a weapon. Where this one, you tap to deal damage to one site. Now, that's one thing I didn't cover, is your locations have stats. You can attack land in this. You can defend land. And how you do that is you set up where your mechs are guarding, if they're guarding or if they're on the field. And you can move to the location if someone's attacking, if your speed is higher than theirs. And you may ask, well, one might talk about speed. I will show you a fast mech right now. Hermes. You see, see the layout's pretty much like a Magic the Gathering card, you know, with everything from it's well, basically power toughness. You have your initiative line there, which Magic doesn't have that, and then of course you have your cost and ability. But you see this little symbol here. That is their speed. And there's three speeds in the game. There's fast, which I just showed you with Hermes. There's medium, and I'll show you with the Puma here. And that's a fast, that's a medium, then not very slow. And there's slow, which is actually one of my favorite mechs, the Panther. Yeah, it doesn't look that powerful, but this will mess up my opponents a lot. Now, it also gives the statistics for the weaponry, size, all that. And the abilities are stuff like this one has missile one, overheat one, adds plus one attack. And jump plus or minus one attack plus one initiative. And I can't remember how heat works, so you gotta pardon me. And I should have done research before I did the video. But 
you know, I'm doing these videos for fun and just kind of giving you an overview. Check them out, you know, for your judge to actually check out the game. And just showing you a few more mechs that I randomly drew out of my pile. The spider and the vulture. Um, you also have just standard commands, you know, which go on the table and do stuff. And then later on they added the subterfuge rule, which I used subterfuge a lot with my Galahad being one of my main mechs I used. There's two factions to play, and I actually prefer using the two factions. There's a variant where you can choose not to go faction, but that's Inner Sphere and Clan. And then if you really want to get technical and get very story arcish, you can divide into the different Inner Sphere groups and the different clans. For instance, I used to play, um, oh, sorry, you got to pardon me, my brain's dead. I used to play um, Ghost Claw, or Ghost Bear, pardon me, all the time. Yes, it's been a long time. Yeah, it was a fun game. It's a game, if you can get your hands on a couple decks, it's worth a check out. And it's probably not that expensive right now. It's got a lot of the Flare Magic the Gathering hat, but at the same time, a lot of new technical stuff. One of the details I forgot to mention is you actually build your mechs. You don't have the resources to play one, you place it face down, and you slowly build up, and your opponents can attack it and destroy your progress that you have done. It's a great way for getting out some bigger mechs. Like I used to have a Dayashi Prime. A Dayashi Prime is insanely hard to get out. If I remember right, it was like 12 resources. So I had to sit here. That's like equivalence of 12 mana in Magic the Gathering. And I had to build it up. Well, as you're doing that, your opponent's trying to knock it down because who wants to face the biggest mech in the game? Um, some other fun stuff, they had like perimeter alarms, which I would break that using those. I'd use a dart with my, uh, my ghost bear pilots, and the darts are extremely weak mechs, but once you put the ghost bear pilot in, you're getting seven, eight attacks a turn at um, a pretty high attack. Because of the specific pilot I was using, the hammer bears, who was, pardon me, not ghost bear, that was my clan Steiner deck, or that was my Steiner deck, um, how Steiner deck. But, um, you know, so I was using my hammer bear on that. It would deal a lot of damage. There was some cool combos you could do. It was short-lived, but it's worth a check out, as I said. Well, thank you, and you have a good day.